Hello there. I hope you all are coping well with this pandemic. Things are not going as planned since January 2020. As you are not capable of attending your classroom physically, we are here trying to bring the classroom to you. Hello, I'm Dr. Rizwan, a consultant internist and an assistant professor of medicine working at ASMC. Today, I will try my level best to make a clear understanding of renal medicine. As a student and later on as an instructor, as a teacher, I have confronted many who find it difficult to grasp the basic pathophysiology of the renal medicine. Why so? Because uh, to understand the renal medicine well, it requires the basic understanding of physiology, anatomy, biochemistry, and a very good correlation with the clinical knowledge. So that is why uh, inappropriate fear sometimes is felt from the student side. And uh, that, that's my point, why you should listen to this lecture, because I hope uh, at the end of my lecture, you will be able to make a clear sense of what is what in renal medicine. So uh, in the renal medicine, uh, the renal emergency is AKI or acute kidney injury. Today, I'm gonna share some insights about the acute kidney injury. First thing first, know that acute kidney injury is not a single diagnosis. It is not like pneumonia, the patient has uh, acute kidney injury means this is a single disease. No, rather acute kidney injury is a clinical, uh, you know, clinical scenario, or you can say it is a situation which can ultimately be produced by a variety of underlying disorders. But before I go any, any further, I want to make a statement clear. When I was a student like you back in 2003, the terminology was not the same. Back in my days in medical school, it was referred to as acute renal failure. So why the shift from acute renal failure to acute kidney injury? It's because, you know, uh, to, to make it a pass, you have to score at least 60 in your exam. So if you are not able to score that mark, you are declared as being failed. So you can fail getting 58 or you can fail getting eight. Sometimes on some rare occasion, you can get zero and be failed. But as you can understand very clearly, this three failure is not the same. A person who scored zero has no knowledge whatsoever about the topics. The person who has scored eight knows something a person who is 58 is marginally failed. He has just missed on the score. So failure means you, you were incapable of scoring the optimal level of expertise. Same goes for organ failure. So if I say heart failure, it doesn't mean that heart has stopped functioning all at once. So it doesn't mean heart functioning is zero, no. What it means simply is that heart is not functioning optimally. So the function of the heart is suboptimal. It is functioning less capable than the normal. That is what heart failure means. And so just like your exam score, the heart failure can also be mild, moderate or severe. In case of renal failure, the same is true but kidney injury is not equal to renal failure. Why? Say you were once upon a time a very bright student who used to score 80 or above in exams, okay? So something happened, something was not going right and you started to fall off and uh, your score gradually started to deteriorate. So from 80, in a semester, you scored 70, which is, of course, less than the previous score, but you still are passing the exam. 
So in uh, the later exam, you have scored 65, which is also a possible mark, but definitely your score is declining gradually. So your student council uh, is concerned about your score and uh, looking at your progress report, they have found that something is not right and your score is gradually falling down. So they call you and they ask you what is going on, what is the problem? So if they, they do not intervene right at this moment to prevent this to happen, you may end up failing the exam in the next semester. That is exactly what kidney injury means. So kidney injury is not always renal failure, but kidney injury means that the renal function is deteriorating. Maybe it is not sufficient to qualify for failure, but the kidney function is deteriorating, no doubt. That is why the preferred term nowadays is acute kidney injury rather than acute renal failure. A uh, lot of confusion, I can see a lot of confusion among my students uh, regarding some other older terms like azotemia and uremia. Well, this acute renal failure, azotemia, uremia, all these terms, these are uh, the terms which were used previously extensively, but nowadays all these are abundant and usually the acute kidney injury is a single term which is used by all the standard guidelines. But still then, I think you should have a better understanding of what those previous terms means, which are still currently uh, prevalent in some literature, of course. So first, azotemia and then uremia. So azotemia, literally, what it means is that your blood urea nitrogen level is increased. Now remember, blood urea nitrogen is not synonymous with serum urea. Do not confuse serum urea with the blood urea nitrogen. Because as we know that uh, the function of the kidney, among many important functions of the kidney, kidney acts as a filter. So it uh, clears your body from the metabolic waste products, among which there is blood urea nitrogen. But blood urea nitrogen is only the nitrogen part of the urea. So it has a lower molecular weight than the whole urea. So the molecular weight of the blood urea nitrogen is 28 and it is raised when the kidney starts to function suboptimally and the normal value of the blood urea nitrogen is between 7 to 21 milligram per deciliter. But the molecular weight of the serum urea, the total urea, not only the nitrogen component but the total structure of the urea, it is 60 almost double than the blood urea nitrogen. So, so you can understand, uh, if I say this patient has a blood urea nitrogen of 10 milligram per deciliter, it means maybe the patient has a serum urea roughly between 20 to 21 milligram per deciliter. That is the difference between blood urea nitrogen and the serum urea. But in simple term, the elevation of the blood urea nitrogen as a result of declining renal function is known as azotemia. Right, so what is uremia then? When this azotemia, which is a biochemical abnormality, you can find azotemia when you are testing the patient's blood. So when this biochemical abnormality of azotemia is sufficient to produce clinical signs and symptoms, then this constellation of biochemical abnormality, sign and symptom, all together, these are known as uremia. So uremia is azotemia plus sign and symptom. Azotemia means raised blood urea nitrogen. Okay, so what is acute kidney injury then? To define acute kidney injury, there are a lot of guidelines. But now in standard textbooks, a unifying definition of acute kidney injury is given. Like uh, if a patient has raised serum creatinine or reduced uh, urinary output. In this clinical scenario, you should suspect that the patient has started to, to develop acute kidney injury. The very first word of the acute kidney injury is acute. So from that word, I can understand that the problem is not a long-standing problem. The problem is a recent one. But how recent is recent? 
So it can be as minimum as 48 hours, but usually it is within seven days. On the contrary, if we compare it with the other uh, clinical entity, chronic kidney disease, the renal injury or the renal impairment must persist for three months or more to call it chronic. So acute kidney injury uh, is such an insult to the kidney in which the renal impairment is there for at least 48 hours, but usually within seven days. So what happens? Why is that renal injury? What happens there? Due to some disease or drugs, the kidney is insulted, the kidney is injured, and it is manifested as raised metabolic waste product, that is serum creatinine, or reduced urinary output. So one thing goes up and one thing goes down. The thing that goes up is serum creatinine, and the thing that goes down is urinary output. Now we have to remember that the, the rise of the serum creatinine, absolute rise of serum creatinine is less important than the relative rise. What does that mean? Well, we have to know the baseline serum creatinine level of a patient. If I know that what is normal for that patient, because you are well aware of the fact that serum creatinine depends on many things, including the muscle mass of a patient. So an amputee who has lost one limb will have a serum creatinine lower than the person who is a bodybuilder. So this is understandable, right? So the baseline serum creatinine is very important while evaluating a patient of suspected acute kidney injury. Why? Because according to the KDIGO, the KDIGO guideline, uh, if there is absolute increase of the serum creatinine of 0.3 milligram per deciliter within 48 hours time frame should be recorded two times within 48 hours or if there is a rise of serum creatinine of at least 1.5 times than the baseline within seven days or if a patient has been suffering from reduced urinary output of less than 0.5 mils per kg body weight per hour for at least six hours. Then the, this patient check all the boxes to call it acute kidney injury. Well, pause here. I want to make a thing clear. Previously, I was discussing about the difference between acute kidney injury and acute renal failure. Now, while I'm defining the acute kidney injury, you should pay close attention to the serum creatinine level and its implication, okay? So serum creatinine level, I have said the absolute rise of serum creatinine of 0.3 milligram per deciliter than the baseline. So imagine a clinical scenario where a patient's baseline serum creatinine was 0.5 milligram per deciliter, because we know in between 1.2 milligram per deciliter, everything is normal. So if a patient's baseline serum creatinine was 0.5 milligram per deciliter, and now within 48 hours, the patient's serum creatinine has risen to 0.8 milligram per deciliter. So the patient satisfies the criteria of AKI, but still the serum creatinine is within the normal reference range. Say a patient of chronic kidney disease has a baseline serum creatinine of three milligram per deciliter. Within one year, the patient's serum creatinine has risen to four milligram per deciliter. So this patient has also increased their serum creatinine, but within 12 months, and the rise of the serum creatinine is not 1.5 times than the baseline. So in the second scenario, we cannot call it an acute kidney injury, but in the first scenario, although the patient's serum creatinine level is within the normal reference range, but this satisfies the criteria of acute kidney injury. And that is my point. So to call it acute kidney injury, it doesn't mean that the serum creatinine has to go off the chart. The serum creatinine has to go beyond the normal reference range. No, it is not true. So the serum creatinine can remain within the normal reference range. That is, the kidney is not yet failed per se, 
but still the patient's kidney is performing less well than the normal. So does it satisfies the criteria of acute kidney injury? So why should we pay attention to these earlier stages? Just like that student, if we do not intervene in this early stage, then it will gradually and it will sharp, some, sometimes very sharply, very fast, it will go down and the patient's life may endanger, may be endangered because this is a renal emergency. So once there is AKI, the mortality rate is high. So how is the mortality rate? How uh, dangerous the AKI condition is? If AKI is only limited to the kidney, only the kidney is the organ which is suffering, in that case, the mortality ranges from five to 10%. But if there are some other organs also, like heart or any other organs, multi-organ dysfunction syndrome, etc., in that case, the kidney function, the mortality uh, rises to 50 to 70 percent. So now you have a clear idea how serious this AKI condition is. If we are not able to intervene right uh, at the initial stage it can kill the patient. So why a patient can develop AKI? Traditionally, we classify the etiology underlying uh, etiologies of the AKI into three categories. The causes which are structurally before the kidney, the causes inside the kidney, and the causes which are after kidney. So pre-renal, renal, or post-renal. That is also a very interesting notion. Why? Because the terminology, the name of the condition is acute kidney injury, but it always doesn't necessarily is linked with kidney. As for example, heart failure can cause your kidney to fail. So here the problem is heart, not the kidney. Kidney is the sufferer, but the primary problem resides in the heart. So although the term is acute kidney injury, but you have to keep in mind, keep in mind that many problems which causes acute kidney injury are not inside the kidney. They are either uh, related to the structures which are before the kidney, or like heart or the blood vessels, or after kidney, like ureter or the bladder. So I think uh, I should proceed slowly to facilitate a better understanding of what I'm saying. So I will try to keep my lectures bite size. I hope in the next session, we will uh, discuss about the pre-renal, renal and the post-renal etiologies of the AKI and how they affect the kidney and the outcome of the patients. Thank you very much. So uh, till the next time, stay safe, wash your hand, maintain physical distance from people but a very close relationship with your book. Thank you very much.